from the Oshkosh Beer Blog. I'm Adam from McKnight and Carlson Wines. And we're drinking beer today from Fulton Beer Company. Yep. Ful yeah, Fulton, Fulton Beer Company. Company. Yeah. yeah. Um, and they're just coming into the market here in Oshkosh. Yeah, they started distributing here about uh, three weeks ago uh, to our territory, actually. I think they were in Milwaukee prior to that. Um, they're, they're based out of uh, right downtown Minneapolis. Um, they're, they're most well known for uh, their Lonely Blonde Ale. And they make uh, an IPA called Sweet Child of Vine. Yeah. So those, those in the Twin Cities, those are everywhere. And I would assume that those would be their flagships in Wisconsin as well. Yeah, they started in 2009 uh, by four home, home brewers. Um, 2011, they built their first brewery and tasting room. And that's still there, right? Yep, yeah. It's, it's uh, right downtown, kind of uh, close to the new Target Field where the uh, Minnesota Twins play, actually. And then in 2011, they built a lar or 2014, they built a larger production brewery, and they're doing like 25,000 barrels of beer now. So. Wow. Yeah, they're doing pretty well. Yeah. They've been distributing Wisconsin for a while, I Yeah, think. The, the west side of the state, kind of across yeah. the area, I know had it for a long time, maybe even Madison, but they just started coming to this side of the state yeah. now. Well, but, it's good to see. Yeah. So uh, this is a beer that they dreamed up when they were still brewing in their garage yeah so this is Liberty. Really? okay yeah i didn't, didn't yeah it's know four that. guys and they started brewing in their garage and ramped up pretty damn quick no kidding so this is an imperial red ale eight and a half percent abv <laughs> 50 ibus you know i have had this beer before actually i and have too okay they used to package it in the 750 milliliter yeah, the wine, wine bottles. And when I when I placed my order for this beer initially, that's what I was expecting. But now it's in uh, four pack, twelve ounce bottles, which is uh, a handier format for a beer of this uh, hefty. Well, I like that. I mean, because if, if you've got that bomber that's eight and a half, yeah, you can't just have that on a whim. I mean, you can only have two or three more after that. So, <laughs> yeah. So nice. Wow. Yeah. Beautiful Ruby. Pit. Yeah. <laughs> Cherry. <laughs> No, I mean ruby color. Yeah, I know, know, I know. This could be your flagship beer at yeah. a place that may one day open. <laughs> oh, yeah, a lot of cherry, a lot of fruit, you know, kind of a strawberry maybe. Even. Yeah. Wow. There's a... So I haven't had this in a while. Yeah. This smells potent. I mean, it does it, smell like alcohol, but... Uh, it does a little bit, I think. It smells like an English barley wine. Yeah. The kind of uh, candied yeah, candied fruit definitely. and uh, toffee. Wow. Oh. There's rye in here, too, and you can you the, can get the, that right away. There's like a slickness. And a little spice, yeah. too. So, and, and there's some bitterness there as well. This is a warming beer. Yeah, it is. I can, I can, you can feel it. <laughs> going down it's not hot but i mean it yeah it's warm yeah the last thing i had was yogurt so it's uh <laughs> <laughs> i'm running on nothing so this is <laughs> off the right start i'm gonna be <laughs> not as i mean it's it's definitely full body but not quite as rich as i was expecting i guess it really does it reminds me of an english barley wine yeah you know it's got that same quality like the english barley wines typically aren't uh as robust and bitter as the American ones yeah, are. Yeah, more malt forward yeah. instead of hop forward. There's a, I'm like getting a, like a woody character too, which yeah. I'm, I'm sure is from the hops. So one, one neat thing about this beer is that they actually uh, release several barrel aged versions of it throughout the year, which really the parallel between that and the English barley wine that I know a lot of breweries like to barrel age the barley wines as well. So they, they, they did a, a, a rye whiskey barrel aged version of this, which I, I've had. And then, they actually did a cask version of this with um, cubed Spanish cedar. That was one of the best beers I've ever had. Really? It cool. was fantastic. I can yeah. see this being a great Blending barrel itself. aged beer. Yeah, because yeah, it, it does have a fair amount of bitterness. It's got you know enough body. And I think they, they may even have brewed a little bit stronger version of it uh, for, for the for the barrel aged version. And at first, I wasn't getting that 50 IBU thing. I definitely get it yeah, now. This yeah. is, I mean, it's it's a nice bitterness, but yep. it's definitely there. Yep. And I get a really, like, earthy kind of... It. I think it's that rye that it's kind of working with. It's, yep. That's a yeah. nice blend of uh, flavors. This there. is this is a really well-made beer, I think. I, it is. It, it, it kind of all the pieces fit together well, I think. Yeah. So... Yeah, and it's a beer that kind of, uh, like... 
the more I'm sitting here drinking it, the more different flavor I'm, I'm yeah, getting out yeah. of it. It's really nice. Yeah. Also, um, they've got a kind of a session saison called the the Randonneur, which uh, I had a chance to try. Light, kind of crisp, floral. That was very nice. Um, have you had the um, Sweet Child of Vine? I have. How's that? Um, Okay, it's o- it's just okay. I mean, you know, the bar is set so high these days for hoppy beer because the market is just flooded with IPAs, pale yeah. oils, double IPAs that you have to be damn good to stick out. And yeah, and I, I think it's it's a great kind of training wheels IPA, if you will. It's 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 not offensively bitter. It's not uh, you know it doesn't have huge citrus or you know tropical fruit flavors. It's kind of pretty middle of the road. Well, I mean, they're they they're growing really quickly. They're up to like 25,000 barrels now. Yeah. You know? I mean, to do that, I don't know if you can really get too uh, Well, you got to have the beers you're have brewing. some flagships that, yeah. that you can do some serious volume with. I mean, I remember just a couple of years ago how they were kind of starting at the same time as several other breweries in the Twin Cities, and they were the ones who kind of exploded it, uh, at, in addition to Surly, obviously, yeah. but um, they do make a couple other beers that are fantastic, too. They make one called War and Peace. Uh, which is a, I think it's an 11%, 11.5% imperial stout brewed with uh, local Minnesotan coffee, which is, you know... I didn't know they grew coffee in Minnesota. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? Locally roasted, of course. Yeah. Um, and th- that beer's fantastic. And they make another one called uh, Worthy Adversary, which is a, oh, a Russian sure. imperial stout, okay. which I think you, you said you had had before. Yeah, I had that. So, it just a uh, really solid lineup of beer. This is a beer that I could see, like, aging. Yeah, I think this would really do nice. Yep, it's an excellent beer though. I like that. Mm-hmm. Definitely. So, are you going to have at Gardena's? Are you going to have this on tap? We'll have this on tap, and I do have a keg of the uh, the Lonely Blonde as well, which which is a nice beer. You know, so it's a blonde ale. Yeah, it's a, it's a blonde okay. ale. Yep, just nice kind of creamy texture, uh, bright flavor. Well, I'm looking forward to seeing more of these beers around town. It's interesting stuff. I like it. Yeah, absolutely. I hope you know I. I feel like someday uh, more breweries from the Twin Cities will be showing up here. Just I mean, I I feel like there's more going on in the Twin Cities brewery wise than there is in Wisconsin currently. You know. Yeah, it's hard to say because you know you get so used to the stuff you see every day. Yeah. That you know these new ones. And I've noticed. Uh, so I was on the western part of the state like a month ago. Sure. There's a lot of Minnesota sure. breweries. Uh, you know, you see distributing yeah. out there yeah. more than here. Absolutely. One one other new brewery to the market right now uh, is Mobcraft out of Madison. So, and for those of you who aren't familiar, they uh, they use crowdsourcing to uh, pick the recipes for the beers that they brew. It's a very unique concept. Um, right now, that we uh, we're carrying at McDonald's Carlson Wines uh, a double IPA called uh, Sipping on G and J, or Gin and Juice, and it's a it's a double IPA with juniper and a, and a bunch of tropical hops. So, they do a lot of unique yeah. stuff. I don't know if you've had a chance. Yeah, I've had any. several of their beers. They had a, that batshit crazy. Yeah, yeah. It's like they're always kind of. They're throwing a lot of uh, culinary sort of ingredients. Exactly. Uh, in another one we just picked up was called the uh, Cerveza Rita, which was a, uh, a mezcal uh, barrel aged kind of margarita like beer. It was brewed with uh, agave nectar and sea salt. Did and you have lime that? zest? I haven't had it yet. Okay. We just we just got them in, but that's that's a brewery that's kind of doing some unique things, and, and you really you have to stand out these days because of you know how many good craft beers are on the shelf. So you know what I, I was so I had a beer the other day that was one of these things that had all kinds of stuff in it, you know. Mm. And, and, well, I, I started thinking, like, don't t- sound too much like a purist now. Well, I was thinking, like, okay, these are all sort of novelty beers. Yeah. How many of these beers are going to be here five years from now? Or is this just going to be a continually Well, that's what I think cycle? Mob, Mobcraft has kind of hit the nail on the head. Obviously, none of those beers they, they brew really, with the exception of a few, are probably sustainable. So, you, you know, you make them one batch at a time and, yeah. you know, on to the next thing. Yeah, I mean, a brewery like that is never going to have a flagship beer. Yeah, exactly. You know? I mean, maybe those days are dead. Maybe the flagship beer days are dead, you know. Well, you even see, like, uh, um, with uh, uh, that brewery, Matt, they make Mad Hatter IPA. New Holland. Yeah, New Holland. So, yeah. they, you know, they have that IPA that had been there for years and years. This past summer, they, they totally re- scrapped the recipe and reformulated it. You know? Yeah. I think uh, people are a lot more fickle now. They just want so much more variety. I don't well, think you can just stand th- by That's one a good thing. Anymore. I mean, the, you know, oh, yeah. competition breeds... You know, better quality, more interesting beer. Yeah, so long as the quality's there. I mean, I think that's, yeah. that's fine. Yeah. All right, man. Well, this is great. Yeah. Delicious. Welcome to Fulton. Yeah. Cheers.